Hey, hi, hey guys, how you doing? So, new article here. I thought it would be interesting to bring to your attention. Here we go. The seven most in-demand tech skills for freelancers in uh, many pay more than 125 an hour. So let's just jump into it and I'll give you my commentaries along the way. I'm making this video especially for people who hate when I read articles. So uh, shout out to you. Tech companies have been making headlines for mass layoffs of late. Google, Microsoft, Amazon all announced they'll be letting go tens of thousands altogether and Twitter and Meta both announced layoffs in the fall. But demand for tech skills remains high. The skills gap is still sharp. It's still a significant gap, says Vicky, career expert at Monster. Employers are struggling to find labor in this tight labor market that can fill various tech needs. Uh, so I will link to the article. This is on CNBC, if you don't know what that is, as a business site. So they're just here to report the business realities. So on top of the list, full stack development. I wonder who's been saying that full stack development is your best choice as a tech career for years now. I wonder who. So full stack developers are trained in both in building both front and back end of a website, front end. Okay, beloved, we know what that is. We know coding languages like JavaScript, Python, and of course these guys aren't nerds, so they all know PHP is huge. Full stack developers on Upwork charge as much as $135 an hour. So let me let me comment on that. So the online freelancer sites are considered like the bottom of the barrel by a lot of people because you got to compete with people over the world. But as I said, if you learn to mine it properly and you price it out, so they're saying $135 an hour is what people are charging. Now here's the thing. I give a strategy where you can easily multiply that times two, three, four for your time if you know what you're doing as a professional freelancer. So anyway, keep that in mind. So yeah, even on Upwork and sites like that, you can charge very good money. This is US sites, so this is US dollars. The better option typically though, if you are in North America, Europe, is local work, where you work with local companies. A lot of small businesses will prefer to work with a local web developer or mobile developer simply because they uh, can speak the language, that's all. They can speak the language more clearly. There's that uh, personal connection. That's a big part of it. That's why I train people in my mentoring program, Shameless Self-Promotion. I teach them how to communicate well. I teach them the soft skills, as they say. It's all in there. Anyway, let's jump back in. Mobile app developer. Mobile app developer is a software engineer who specializes in creating mobile apps for, well, apps for smartphone, tablets, computers. They can charge as much as 155 an hour. So we go on. So web design, build websites, create and improve, blah, blah, blah. So we go on up to 250 an hour web design. UI, UX designers, people who focus on, uh, you know, building the UI, UX, as they describe here, uh, creating user-friendly experiences on web apps, websites and apps. They plan and structure their sites, develop its content, create prototypes, test for bugs. So 120, CMS development, 105, manual testing, 50, script automation, well, up to 350 an hour. Why would script automation people who are writing Python and JavaScript code a lot, why would they be making so much money? Probably because it's very specialized. It's probably very specialized. A lot of people are concentrating on other things. So again, this is all about development programming rather. So you got to know your Python, you got to know your JavaScript. It's something different to look into. There you go. That's the story. The seven most in-demand tech skills for freelancers. Many pay more than 125 an hour. As I said, if you know what you're doing, you can multiply that by two, three times or more or more. Uh, I talk about that in the uh, freelance training and the project management training. In a nutshell, once you develop workflows, uh, good reputation, uh, once you understand how you have leveraged tool sets, you can start becoming hyper productive and still charge standard rates. Anyway, that's for another story. So there you go. Even now with all those layoffs, and I talked about that before, when the big tech companies lay off, it's not necessarily a sign of bad business, right? If you look at the recent reports for the publicly traded companies, Amazon, Apple, yeah, they didn't make their their numbers. They're still making huge amounts of money, but they made like a little bit less than they projected. So people go, ah, 
you understand, you can't let the noise from the big tech companies uh, drive fear into you. A lot of these tech companies, first of all, they're driven by short-term requirements to show growth and profitability, so to keep the stock price up. So they'll do things like fire off a bunch of people. But on the flip side, a lot of times when they're in the growth phase, they'll hire a bunch of people they don't really need in the first place. Uh, and then they'll lay off a bunch of dead wood, and then uh, dead wood being people are not as productive. And But anyway, a lot of those people just end up finding jobs elsewhere, as I pointed out. So there you go. Lots of job opportunities. If you're looking at the getting into tech, I'm a huge advocate for freelancing. It's a great way to start. It's a great way to build your initial skill set so you can start off freelancing, do that for a little while, build up, build up a great portfolio. And then if you decide you want to go work for a company, you're going to be able to get a job like this because you will have a proven track record. This, by the way, is an outline of the pathway that people follow in my mentoring program. Learn the code, learn the fundamentals, build a portfolio site, do a bunch of projects internally, just develop those skills, and you go out, do two to three small freelance projects for a local nonprofit, local small business. On the strength of that, you start getting freelance clients, and on the strength of all that, you can parlay that into a job, you can build a freelance business, or whatever you want to do. All right, I hope this is useful. I'm Uncle Steph. Cheers. Mm -hmm.